Welcome to the Salt Sideline Report. I'm Leanna Hawkins, and we are here at Salt, New York with Delian Asparohov. He is the principal, one of the principals at Founders Fund and the co-founder of Varda Space. He was talking on a panel at Salt in real life today. Yeah. Happy first, to have you here. First in real life space event that I've done since pre-COVID. Very exciting. Also big fan of Chris, who's the CEO of Astro that was on stage with me. So it was exciting to uh, finally meet him in person as well. Yeah, we had a really, really good lineup talking about all things space and innovation. And you talk on a subject about something with to do with Varda that I don't even know what it means. Um, so why don't you break down space factories for us and what does that mean and who are you serving? So over the past decade on the International Space Station, i.e. the ISS, where NASA and all the astronauts are, they've basically proven over the past decade, there's a set of materials that can be produced at much higher qualities when they're done in space. So things like fiber optics that you can send more signal through, or uh, pharmaceuticals, cancer drugs that are more potent when they're made in space, or semiconductors where you can make a chip that is more powerful when made in space. Um, all of those have been proven on the ISS. However, it's just not a place where you can commercially scale things up and do it at large scale. The ISS is built to be a research station with humans on board. You have to be very you know, delicate and have safety protocols. So what we're doing is we're taking that research, putting it onto an independent satellite platform. And so when you look at our space factories, they actually just kind of look like a small satellite. Just inside, there's some raw materials that are getting processed and fabricated. And at the very end, the unique thing is we sort of have like an Apollo-like capsule, just very small, that basically splits off from the satellite, comes down and brings those products back down to Earth. But for our customers down here on Earth, they don't think of us as a space company. They think of us as a fiber optics or a semiconductor or a pharmaceutical company. They could care less about us going to space. They just like the fact that we've got great products. So who do some of those end customers that are, are using your space factory technology, um, what, is that, what does that look like? So, for example, on the pharmaceutical side, uh, you know, Eli Lilly, Pfizer, Merck, the large pharmaceuticals, uh, they already have programs internally where they do research on the ISS and they use that to develop drugs. There's actually certain cancer drugs that have relied on microgravity research to actually get brought to market. We just provide them a way to come up with an experiment and then bring that experiment back down three months later and for much cheaper cost than having to, like, you know, go to the ISS. Mm -hmm. um, so that's on pharmaceuticals, on fiber optics. It's, you know, AT&T and T-Mobile and basically like the telcos that just want to be able to pump more data through the semiconductors there's no reason that one day the like you know m1 chip in your you know mac should get produced on earth when you can do it at higher qualities in space and so a lot of our customers are actually kind of like household names uh we're just further back we're kind of what i call like the contract manufacturer for space so uh, when people need something done up there uh, we help them make it happen so what is the link then between space factories and varda founders fund and all your different initiatives and the sort of institutional and retail investing world the audience is here at SALT. Yeah, so one of the things that I really like about Founders Fund is we have a reputation for uh, incubating companies. So what that means is when there's an idea that we really want to work on, but we can't find an investment that's out there in the world, we incubate it. And so uh, one of the companies that went public in 2020 uh, was actually one of our uh, incubations, Palantir, uh, that we incubated when we first started the firm. Uh, more recently, we have a private company that is getting quite large now that we incubated called Anderil uh, that was done about you know four years ago. Um, that's part of why I really like working at Founders Fund is I can balance sort of private institutional investing into startups. Uh, with actually getting to build the company that I really you know, care about at the same time. And most sort of institutional platforms don't really let you do that. They want you to sort of like choose you know, one or the other. Um, and so I think that's a special, special platform. So hopefully more of our incubations will be going public soon. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad that you were able to get your face in front of the audience here at SALT today on the panel and you're a change maker in the space world. So we're so lucky to have you here at SALT. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.